All right, Shalom, Rastafari. This will be the third part for 2012, the first um, Torah portion from the book of Orit uh, Zelewawiyan, or Wayikara, uh, um, and he called or the the Torah of the the Levites. Now we're touching on the creatures that were acceptable for sacrifice, the five types, and what's the relationship with our Black Lord and Savior Yeshua HaMoshiach with the blue Christos, the heavenly Christ. Mm-hmm. No one quite said if, if, you know, if I tell you earthly things and you can't receive earthly things, how can you receive heavenly things? All right? So we have to keep that, let's keep that in mind. Please, let's keep that in mind. So he explains to us the heavenly things by the earthly, by the earthly types. And as we mentioned in the previous portion and show this particular demonstration here, we both show the tabernacle. And we look at the tabernacle as a type and we compare the furniture and that which is in the tabernacle, the feet of Christ right here, the, the, the brass feet, speaking of his humanity, his Ethiopianness, his black maleness. You know, saying in case you want to get a get a visual, look at the 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 um Mizbeach, you understand? If you want to look at the Mizbeach, you understand right here, which is the um Mizbeach uh Hoshet or the brazen, you know, Hoshet. That's the brass, according to uh, according to the Hebraics. Right here, we have the the two poles. You understand know the staves. You understand know Jehovah Witness make a lot about it. it. wasn't a cross. It was like it's a stave, just a wooden pole, or whatever. But we have two staves here. So over overstand these two staves, you can X them. You over overstand. You see the evidently before you. Now the Messiah Yeshua. Um, Jesus Christos was able to endure Yahweh's fiery judgment. Now we have Leviticus 17 and 1, Revelation 1 and 15, or 14 and 15, Revelation 2 and 16, and we have Hebrews chapter 12, verse 29. Now, the book of Hebrews, I didn't mention this before, but hallelujah, I remember to mention this here now, that Le uh, Leviticus and Hebrews should be read and studied side by side. Mm-hmm. Because Hebrews gives you the overstanding why the tabernacle, in principle, the tabernacle was a was a type, an earthly type. You understand an earthly type of the Samayawi or of the heavenly, of the heavenly, right? So we can see this in Jesus Christos's demonstration here when we align the tabernacle. To Christ, you understand the tabernacle. And how many, how many pieces of furniture we have here? Main, big pieces. One, two, three, four, five. We have six, and the tabernacle makes seven. And the the courtyard, the camp, it makes eight, eight major, major pieces. But there's smaller elements too that tell a a big story. You understand a, a a big story. The small elements like the holy of holies. There's the lid with the with the with the chepra or the karubim, the cherubim, the altar of incense. You understand the ashes, the table of showbread with the twelve loaves, the seven lamp um menorah right here, the water basin that was based on the woman's mirrors. There was the mirrors of the woman. Coming out of Egypt, they had these mirrors that they donated, you understand, for this laver, you understand, where the priests were supposed to wash their hands and their feet before they enter into the tabernacle. Remember, Christ uses the metaphor of the waters, the living waters, the living waters. Then we have right here the brazen altar, and this is where we're at in Leviticus. We begin off with the brazen altar coming to the what? The foot of the cross. And that foot of the cross because it's animals which are being slain, you understand, and put on that, that, that wood fire, of course we're going to have skulls and bones. And the place that Christ was crucified was called Golgotha, or Golgotha, right? And Golgotha was called the place of the skulls. And this is why those into the demonic occult cannot get beyond the skull and the bones. It's like they cannot get beyond that point because there's no atonement. There's no atonement. Now, um, 
what's kind of sickly interesting is that the the racist slave mass and the racist they they were still doing human sacrifices and still are actually if you take some of the cases recently in the news you understand where they had gone back not even to the animal sacrifice but to the human sacrifice that's why they said only good black male is a dead black male and those type of black males they usually kill usually you understand are these ones who are without blemish in the sense of you know the the, the the good black male, so to speak, if you understand what I mean. You know, um, I mean, look at the children. For example, all these children, Emmett Till, you understand, years ago, and even Trayvon um, Martin presently. So when we speak about the so-called black church, you understand, the scriptures testify in spirit and in truth to everything that we are saying. Now, these creatures that are accepted, the animal creatures acceptable for sacrifice are five. Let's deal with the bullock first. The bullock. You understand? Here we have the bullock or the ox. This is the bullock or the ox right here. What about the bullock? What about the ox? How does the bullock, let's get you a little zoom in on this right here, and let's go in a little bit, a little bit um, um, more in Let's get it. Okay, here we go right here. The bullock or the ox. Right? There we have the bullock or the ox. Right? Now, what's interesting is that, you remember what we said about the golden calf, in a sense? They went back to this, you understand, as a dead image. You understand? Now what they're being given is a type, a living, conscious type. You understand? A conscious type to really over you know, understand that the bullock or the ox, it typifies in type the Moshiach or Christos as the patient and enduring servant. That's what the bull is. The bull is a patient. It's an enduring servant. First Corinthians um, 9 and 9 and verse 10, Hebrews uh, chapter 12, verse 2 and 3. And the bullock is a type that is characteristically obedient to death. This is also found in Isaiah 52, verses 13 to 15, and, and um, I think Philippians uh, 2 and 5 to 8. Now, his offering, the offering now of the bullock, what, what is the significance of the offering of the bullock? The significance of the offering of the bullock is substitutionary for this we have not been in other words it's a it's a substitution for that which we have not been so it's really showing that we have not been obedient to death we have not been patient and enduring as as christos but then it also is telling us something something even more so when we look at the heavens but let's first Overstand the earthly type before we look at the at the at the heavens. You understand? But of course, if we look at the zoology of the heavens and the and the and the witness, you know, in the stars and of the stars, we'll find Taurus. You understand? And then after Taurus, where do we go? Where do we go from Taurus? We go to the the sheep or the lamb, which basically is 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 likened to Aries. So here we have over here, let's bring this over. Here we have the 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 ram, right? The ram, the sheep, the lamb or the ram. Now notice this for a moment. The the sheep, when we're talking about the sheep, the lamb, the ram, we are chiefly speaking of the ram because of the horns. In other words, we're still talking about the male, even though one could sacrifice in in those days, you understand, a female, you understand, a female um, um, a sheep, in other words, but it was the male type, you understand, the one with the horns, the significance is the horns, because most of the sheep, the sheep are basically the females, that's why it has a shepherd who is the male, in other words, that's part of the type that the scripture seeks to um, teach. Now, the lamb or the sheep, it typifies, or the ram, the ram, because they'll say Christ is the lamb, but really they mean that he is the ram. It typifies Christ, Christos, Hamoshia, in un, 
r resisting self-surrender to the death of the cross, unresisting self-surrender to the death of the cross, Isaiah 53 and 7, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verses 32 to uh, 35. And now, here we get the Ethiopian testimony. Let's go there for a moment. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8. Now, remember, in chapter 7, we have Stephen, Estefanos, being martyred. We have in chapter 8, and he was martyred because of that witness he saw in the stars. Basically, he looked up and, and he understood the heavens and you know, that was too much for the religionists of that particular time. In chapter 8, we have the Ethiop Philippos, Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. So the, the verse they give us here in Schofield is, is 32 to 38. Let's read 32 to 38. And this is the Ethiopian eunuch scene. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And like a lamb dumb before his shearer. Think about the world here, you know, the kinky, kingly here. So open he not his mouth. Remember when um, you know, Pontius Pilate, oh, Pontius Pilate asked, and what is truth? And Christ just looked at him, and like, you, you're looking at it. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? Question mark. For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch, the Ethiopian Hebrew eunuch, the black Jew, who was the Ethiopian eunuch, answered uh, Philippe, Philippos and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? Interesting question. You know, I mean, like, like a real black Jew. You know, interesting question right there. Who is he speaking of? I mean, a lot of folks, they, I, oh, you know, and they'll make up stuff. You understand? But see, we see the quality, essential quality in the Ethiopian eunuch, and that's teachability, even though it's obvious he's, he's going to Jerusalem for the high, the high Fasica, the high Hebrew holy days. He, he got a copy of Isaiah. He's reading Isaiah, whether in Hebrew or whether in Ethiopic, he's reading a copy of Isaiah. But still, he asks that question. He's teachable. And who shall declare his generation? And he says, um, he says um, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this? of himself or some other man. Now, verse 35 is the key. Then Phil, uh, Philip, or Philippos, he opened his mouth, the opening of the mouth. Ancient Egypt, remember the opening of the mouth? You understand? Know Speaking truth. You understand? Know and he opened his mouth and began at the same scripture. He didn't run him around. Well, let's go over here. Let's go. No, he says, okay, at the same scripture. And he preached to him Yeshua. He opened his mouth at the same scripture, and who did he preach? He preached Yeshua. You understand? Know he preached Yeshua. Now, that's the that's the verse right there. There's more to that, but that gives that should give um the willing an example to follow up on a, a example of the scripture, an example of the chief lesson here in these type of acceptable uh, sacrifices, korbanot. Now, the next one is the goat. So let's get to the goat. Now, you've been hearing a lot about the goat nowadays, you know, the baffle man and all this, you know, the laundry man and the baffle man and all this other kind of stuff, right? But let's, let's get an overstanding because many don't even have a really good understanding. But let's get an overstanding of what it's actually speaking of here. So we actually, let's see, there's this one over here, which is said to Dendera, the Dendera goat. You know what I'm saying? So let's see if we can bring this. Well, well, we'll start over here, and then we'll move it over here. Let's give you a, a clip of this. You see this one over here? It's pointed. It looks like Seti, right? It's a Typhonian animal. You know, Lepis, Asterium, Lepis, the Lepis of the Aster, the Star Lepis, or the Star Goat. And then the, here's the Dendera goat. Right, and this is a Typhonian animal. Some say it's mythical. You know, saying a, 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 a suit Typhonian animal right here, right? The goat right here, right? The goats down here. You see them bringing the goats right there. 
All right, so now what is this um, goat all about? Now, even I think they said in Ethiopia that it was a goat that was eating some coffee beans, and that's how they, they found out about coffee, some say. You, you know, that's an interesting um, story or, or mythos there that probably has more, more to it than meets the eye. But the goat here typifies the sinner. This is why they love the goat in, in, their, in, their, in their goat worship. You know what I'm saying? Because it typifies the sinner. Matthew 25, 33. And when you sacrificially, Christos HaMoshiach, as numbered with the transgressors, that he was accounted with the transgressors, even the whole scene on the cross. You know what I'm saying? Next to him were, were two thieves. So he was counted amongst them. You, 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 and even with um, um, Christ and his kingly character, Edomari Hala Selassie, he also was numbered and still some number him with the transgressors, whether they want to talk about, you know, the the Freemasons or Illuminati or all that kind of stuff and everything like that. But they don't understand that Christ as numbered with the transgressors, Isaiah 53 and 12, Luke um, 23 and 33. And he was made sin. He was made into a sin. You understand? Know or, 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 and a curse, according to Galatians 3 and 13. Galatians 3 and 13. 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. As the sinner's substitute, or as the substitute, even for the sinners. Right? Now let's just go to Galatians. We touched on Galatians before, didn't we? We touched on Galatians uh, chapter 3. And here this has a quote from 3 and uh, three and 13. So let's go back to chapter 3 and let's read up to verse 13 and try to connect the sense so we don't have fragmented, you know, fragmented knowledge. And then try to connect the dots, so to speak. So right here it says, Oh foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you in order to, um, who have bewitched you, right? Um... Right, uh, says, who have bewitched you, bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth. Wow, so they, they were full or bewitched, put on the spell, not to obey the truth. That's why when people see most dead ones, you know, they see this picture of Christ or any picture of Christ that presents him more true to his, 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 his humanity, his blackness, in other words, you know. They um they don't want to obey that truth. They fight against it. No matter how much evidence you show them, they're, they're, they've been bewitched. Before whose eyes, Jesus Christos hath been evidently set forth. If you look up evidently set forth, you know, study that, look in Strong's Concordance and, and so forth and so on, you'll find out that evidently set forth means painted, portrayed in, in painted form, crucified among you. This only would I learn of you. Receive, Kabbalah, ye the spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the spirit? Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? You see, so though we have begun, in the, we're not made perfect by the fact that Jesus is black. See, that's, that's where we, we kind of come out against a lot of the people that just talk about the blackness and the melanin, and people got melanin in them, but the melanin spirit, because they're spiritual, um, disobedience to the truth that melanin is, is inactive. It's inactive. It actually becomes a, a sin and a curse to them. You understand? Are you so foolish, having begun in the spirit? Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He therefore that ministereth to you the spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth he by the works of the law? or by the hearing of faith. And this is important what we're studying now in Leviticus. Remember the key words, if and voluntary. If, 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 and voluntary. Nothing says that you must do this, but later on in the religiosity of Israel, they made this that you must, that you show your faith by how much sacrifices you make, so forth and so on. Well, all of that was, 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 was an if, you know, if and voluntary. Not that that show that that work of the so-called law. The Abrahamic covenant is a by faith covenant. Even as Abraham mamend or admitted the truth that Ha Elohim had admitted God, 
admitted Jah, and it was accounted to him for righteousness because he admitted the truth. That's a, because he didn't do any kind of work or, like I said, tread up or do this or that, but he has admitted the truth, and that was accounted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are of are the children of Abraham, the same by extension, regardless of their flesh in that sense, those who admit the truth. So if he is black, just admit the truth. It's not because he's black we think, oh, that, that we don't have to, you know, live according to the spirit of truth because the truth is that he's black. No, we, we don't begin in spirit and end in flesh. You would begin in flesh and end in spirit or perfect in spirit. And the scripture foreseeing that Jah would justify the heathen, the heathen, the Goyim, even white folks, for my people, that's what it means, the heathen, even white folks, preach before the gospel to Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So because of our black Lord and Savior, and because of his people, his true, faithful, spiritual people, other people are blessed. So when they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Now the man who's under law works is under the curse of the law. You see, so remember we, we began off talking about when the Israelites had done the golden calf thing, that the tabernacle was removed from, from amongst Israel and Moses pitched it far, far, you know, far away. So they only saw it like a tent. It was no longer a tabernacle. They could only go there at certain times of, of holy feasts and festivals or if they brought a korban, korban note, if they brought sacrifices and so forth and so on. They could not approach in themselves because they had gone backward. You understand? They had gone backward. So John decided to teach them from there going forward for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse for it is written curse is everyone that continueth not in all the things which are written in the book in the book of law to do them and in a sense what we have in that is um is is leviticus this is why when we're studying this, this is a study. It's not talking about we're going out doing no burn offering, no barbecue, no divine barbecues or not. No, no, no. It's it's a lesson. It's 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 a metaphor. It's a parable. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of Jah. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. So the the real just, the Sadiqan, live by faith, and the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. That's why it begins off saying voluntary, if. You see, if. It's almost like there was a test for them. Are you really gone backward? Do you really want to be under law and not in laws? They were given the option to be in laws, but they chose by the golden calf incident to be under law. Uh, Christ has borne our law curse that we might have the faith blessing. So now Christos has borne that. But now, one would say, well, what, if that's so, then why why were so many black people still, uh, they're, they're lynching them and doing these things? Because they're still under the curse. They don't admit who they are. You understand? And they're not living the truth. You understand? They're still under white man's law. You understand? And white man's way, not Jah's way. They're not in laws to Jah, but they're under white man or Gentile law. And so they're under, a, you know, they're under a curse. Therefore, when we see things like this right here, you understand? In one form or another, there's a very logical reason because for for the racists and the demonically possessed um, um, white folks who who like doing this sort of stuff to a nigga, you understand? That is his offering. That is the way that he gets close to God. Why do you think the Klan goes goes around burning burning crosses? Think about it for a moment. Why would they be burning a cross and then even burning black people too, unless it's a type of a holocaust, it's a type of a burnt offering? Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's very important for you to, if you're able to receive that, you will see a great thing, you know what I'm saying, concerning this word of, of God being manifested even in our time. Now, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us. 
for it is written, Curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Yeshua HaMoshiach, through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant. Now, I want you to understand something right here. You understand? He's saying, not that Jah's covenant is a man's covenant. I want you to see some folks, some religious folks say, see, it's a man's covenant. No, he would never say Jah's, Jah's word is because that doesn't make no sense, spiritually, theologically, otherwise. He's given an example. For example, Christ was crucified under what? Was he crucified under Torah law? No. He was crucified under Roman law. He was crucified under the, the Pax Romana. These Negroes, are they being killed under Jah's law? No, under Roman law. So you see the curse of the law. That, that's the law of sin right there. You understand? The law of God points out what the man of sin does. Understand that. Now Christ has redeemed us. So he says, Brethren, I speak after the man of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulled or addeth thereto. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds, and to races, not to many races as of many, but as of one, of one race, the black race, and to thy seed, which is the Moshiach, or which is Christos, which is, which is Christ. Now, it goes on to explain something that I think I'm going to just dovetail here for a moment, though we didn't get to the third uh, the fourth and the fifth type, the turtle dove or the pigeon. The turtle dove or the pigeon. So let's put a pin in it right here at Galatians chapter 3. Um, we end at verse 16, so we have to begin again from verse 17. Some of you all probably know this particular chapter, which explains that the law is our schoolmaster until the Christ consciousness become. You know what I'm saying? This is what we're trying to explain. Leviticus was in that time post post um post golden calf incident right now the turtle dove let's get back to the the, the the last the last examples right here of the five types of the burnt um offering all right and now let's bring this up right here we have the the turtle dove and the pigeon or the bird right as as the fourth and the fifth, the turtle dove or the pigeon are naturally a symbol of mourning, innocently, or innocent, uh, innocency, of mourning, innocency. Now, that's interesting, because when we look at ancient Egypt, we see a type, we can actually see the whole turtle dove, even with the whole Osar, Osiris, um, um, mythos, we see um, the turtle dove, or Isis is like that turtle dove that's flying over him, that's bringing him back, or is a symbol, it's all connected right there in the same sort of a type. So we have here the Schofield saying that naturally a symbol of mourning innocency. Isaiah um, 38 and 14, Isaiah 49 and 11. Matthew 23 and 37, Hebrews 7 and 26 is associated with poverty. This particular um, symbology right here, when we speak right here of the turtle dove, um, the turtle dove it was associated with, um, with, with poverty, in other words, what the poor would, 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 would offer, not having great cattle, to spear, since it's voluntary, you understand, would offer a turtle dove or a pigeon, right? Associated with poverty in Leviticus 5 and 7, Leviticus 5 and 7, and speaks of him who for our sakes became poor in Luke 9 and 58, and whose pathway of poverty, which began with laying aside the form of God, his his um 
his pathway of poverty, he laid aside the form of God and, and not lived as a divine, in a sense, being. You understand? Like, you know, the so-called snap your fingers type, but he lived as one of us. So that whole, if God was one of us, you know, I saw something like that a little bit. Ended in the sacrifice through which we became rich. So that that all ended, you understand, in that particular sacrifice and the type, and this is it right here, where where um, we became, you understand, know rich. And we became rich not like the prosperity and the demonic faith, uh, so-called churches out there teach like prosperity. You're gonna have a bunch of like money and cars and houses and clothing and kind of stuff like that. No, we're speaking about the the, the riches of the spirit, the riches of life, you understand, and life even more abundantly. You notice when a lot of these folks get material w w riches, like witches, uh, material witches, riches, it's like they've been bewitched and it becomes more of a hell for them. I mean, look at look at a lot of the examples we already we already have and have seen in our present time. But he laid aside the form of God. And that was ended with the sacrifice through which we became rich. Second Corinthians 8 and 9, um, Philippians 2, verses 6 to 8. Now, the sacrifice of the poor man becomes the poor man's sacrifice. Luke chapter 2, verse 24. Now, we apologize not being able to go through all of those verses. You know, saying with you, but those who are diligent, you know, we definitely would advise that they check out these verses, you know, take the time, check them out for themselves in this context. Now, these grades, now these were grades of typical sacrifice. They test, the, they test the measure of our apprehension of the varied aspects of Christ one sacrifice on the cross. So his one sacrifice on the cross, these these five types right here, let's let, let, let's bring this um down to size a little bit more. These um five types right here, right? These five types right here that we just went through. Let's get the proper this should be okay, this should be a little bit a little bit clearer right here. It's a little bit small right now. But these five types, the bullock or ox, the sheep, the lamb or ram, the goat, the turtle dove or the pigeon, the bird, you understand? Know these, it, it, the point I want to make right here, the, the the thing Hunger Games, you know that, that, that Hunger Games thing, that's just another child sacrifice thing. I just want to say it. Maybe I'll get options to go into a little more detail. The reason why I say that, I'm looking at this bird type. I was looking at one of the graphics for the movie, and if you look, there's like kind of a dove that seemed like it broke its neck or something, you know, like it's, it's, it looks sickly. It used a kind of a pigeon, a dove, you know, the symbol for peace, so forth and so on. But it's really about the children, you understand, um, um, killing each other. You know, the, the, the killing each other for what, for food or something like that? I don't know, for food, for fame, for the family, some some kind of madness. You understand? But it, it's 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 all explainable when we understand the half of the story, when we understand um, the how we got here by understanding the past in its proper context. So I'll, I'll, I'll get into that, y'all willing, a little bit more. But these grades of typical sacrifice, they, they were to test the the measure and we test the measure of our apprehension of the varied aspects of Christ's one sacrifice on the cross. So we've gone through it right here. It might not click. All of this might not click. A little bit might click, you know, uh, now. But later on, if one continues to study and continues to grow, you know, when it says the Lord is our schoolmaster, till Christ come, when you can see how these five aspects were all fulfilled in Christ upon the cross. That means understanding what they meant. In the time of Orit Zelewawian or Vaikara, in the time of Leviticus, and understanding the, the the types that were given to them and how they were fulfilled in Christ, then truly one has come to that point where the law, the Torah, is acting as a schoolmaster and bringing on the mind of Christ. When Christ says, "If I show you earthly things, and you do not understand earthly things, how would you understand heavenly things?" 
So once we do a 360 on these earthly things, then we'll be able to connect these now with the so-called astral theology or the witness in the heavens and better understand our, our roles and responsibility. So the mature mitmanan or the mature amanya, the mature um, faithful and true witness who has amen, the, the amanya mitmanan, should see or should endeavor and pray to see Christos, Ha Moshiach, crucified in all these aspects, or so to overstand his crucifixion through each one of these five. You know, saying each one of these five aspects. Now, when we touch on the laying on of hands, let's just deal with this part for this section right here. We still got a little bit of time on this, okay? Um, the laying on of the offerer's hands, because you remember that in verse, what was it, in verse 4, it says, and he shall put his hand upon the head of the burnt offering, and it shall be accepted for him to make atonement for him. That when these these um, uh, korban notes were offered, one brought them forth to the door of the tabernacle and put his hand upon the head, and that's where they would pronounce whatever it is that they had had done or what it, why was the reason why to the priest and the priest would listen you know and they would kill the animal the person who brought the animal forward remember all this is voluntary so if if one if one's conscience remember they went back to that when they went to the golden calf that showed that the people were not ready to be the priesthood a nation of the priesthood in laws, but had to be under law. The Levites, on the other hand, show by their willingness to respond to such, you understand, and to clear away and cleanse uh, the abomination and the sinners. And now, another key thing about what the Levites did people ask, why all this black on black violence? You know why all this black on black violence? It's because of the not fulfilling of the covenant. Think about it for a moment. Look at right here once, one more time, one more time right here, when the whole calf incident, right, came about, right? Verse 26, um, Exodus, 20, Exodus 32, Exodus chapter 32, verse 26, the Sepharu Dej Omo, Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on Adoni's side? Let him come to me and all the sons of, of, of Levi, Yelewim Lejoch Hulu, gather themselves together to him. Verse twenty seven, Arusum and he Ye is Raiela Amlak Egzyavi Hir Elohe Israel and Diyla Ye Nanta Sohulu Seifun Bewagabu Alai Yita Yitatek Be Sepharum Wist Bezihina Bezia Kabur is Kabur Temalalesu Ye Nantem so Hulu Wendemun Wadajunim Gorebe Tunim Yigdel Alacho Put every man his sword by his side. Speaking to the Levites now, right? The Levites. That's where we get the book Lewawia. And go in and out from gate to gate. From each of the gates of all the stars, every nigga is a star. Well, went to all their star gates throughout the camp, and slay every man, his brother, and every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. Now, why is this so? Why was this so? You remember when the, in the prophets where it says, um, "If you speak, if you don't speak to them, then their blood be on your hands." That's exactly what it means right there. That's exactly because Levi was supposed to, but at the last, Levi said, we, we're still for you. We, we kind of allow that, allow that stuff to go through. You understand? Maybe not recognizing how significant it was. You understand? But when Moses, who's on my side, wh what happens to other tribes? They could not come to his side because their consciences spoke guilt. Mm -hmm. So a lesson had to be performed here, and that lesson had to be performed in their bloodshed. Now, this may seem different than the society we live in now, but if you want to know why there's so much black-on-black -black crime, this is, this is the spiritual crux, the cross, crux, cross, of 
the matter. Verse 28, it says, Yelewima lijoch muse in dale, in dale adergu. Beziam en kahizbu, sost she sawoch motu. And the children of Levi, not the children of Reuben or Gad or Isaac or so forth, no, or Judah even, the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses. And there fell of the people that day about 3,000 3, men. As you go forward, it says, Moses says to them, consecrate yourselves. You understand? Consecrate yourselves this day. Mm-hmm. Make yourselves holy to God this day. Even in that bloodshed of those 3,000, they, they were, I wouldn't say sacrificed, but they, they got what they deserved. See, a sacrifice is something that stands between. This is what Le Leviticus would be now. When you feel your guilt you, you, reaching up to that level, if you want to make a cover for that sin, you bring forth your animal. But that was now given to the Levites as the priesthood, and not to call Yisrael or Israel Hulu because they had shown themselves unwilling, when one can say irreverent, to the will. So that black-on-black -black crime kind of thing, when you look at this right here, it's kind of very interesting because they were worshiping the golden calf, and Moses, as a representative of Yahweh, had to say, who is on Adoni's side? Let him come to me. You know what I'm saying? Then he told them, put every man his sword on his side and go in and out from, from the gate to the gate. You know, from every every gate, every tribe has their own kind of, you could say, like a little city. You know what I'm saying? Go in and out and every house and other families go in and just and just deal with everyone. Now, this may sound kind of kind of raw, but the curse that was caused on all of Israel did not end with just that. Because notice down here when we get to the last verse of chapter 32. Last verse of chapter 32. This is making sense of why Leviticus? You're saying, why would, why would we have a book like Leviticus and everything? We seem to, in a sense, they had gone backward. But now, Yah gave them this gracious intermediary step. This, 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 and now, in the New Testament, it's not Levi no more. Levi has been done away with. But it's after the order of Malchus, Edek, and it's Judah. You understand? And Judah, you understand, is the praises of God. It's the spiritual, you understand? We could say the spiritual forms of the sacrifice, sacrifices of the calves of our lips, as one of the prophets says. But verse 35 sums it up right here that Yahweh plagued the people. You understand? Plagued the people because of the calf. Because even though the calf was ground up into dust, even though they had to eat the calf, even though 3,000 were slain, this this mental sickness, you understand, this the sycamore, you understand, still remained in their minds. It still remained in their hearts. Now Moses, we know Moses asks for, for, for grace and mercy and be blotted out of the book, so forth and so on. But Yahweh graciously said that the one who sins, he, he's the one that's going to get blotted out of the book. Now, when we look at the laying on of the offerer's hand, it signified acceptance and identification. See, when we look at the hand as a hieroglyph, what does the hand symbolize? The hand, the yad. You understand? Yad Veshem. You understand? The yad, the hand, Veshem, or Veshem, and the name. That, that, that acceptance of it, as well as identification. That actually, when we say word to God, Word to God. Word to God, there goes I. You understand? In words, when you sacrifice that animal, because it wasn't the priest. Remember, it wasn't the priest that cut the, cut the neck. The priest would collect some of the blood and then take that. You understand? We'll, we'll take that blood and then, and, then, and, then, and then present that. You understand? Present that before, before Adoni as a sign, as, as a kapar, as a covering, but still the full atonement, the blotting out, could not come because, as Hebrew says, the blood of bulls and goats could never atone, make atonement, but it was only a kapar, was a covering. You understand? It was like a, it was like a, pro, a probationary phase. They were under probation. 
So the acceptance and identification of himself, of himself with his offering. In type, it answered to the mitmanon faith, accepting and identifying himself with, with Christos, with the Moshiach. Romans 4 and 5, Romans 6, verses 3 to 11. The mitmanon, or the amanya, the faithful one, the one who has true amen, Revelation 3, 14, is justified by faith because he has done this with the faith. It's not the work, but his faith. His faith is reckoned for righteousness because his faith identifies him with the Moshiach who died as his sin offering. Remember, the sin offering. We're going to get into the specifics of which offerings was which. As a sin offering, Second Corinthians 5 and 21, First Peter 2 and 24. So hopefully this, these, these three vids, you know, and teaching and lecture, hopefully that will at least begin to give one a better or a good foundation to go forward in within this particular, um, this uh, third um, book, the third book of Musa, the third book of, of Moses, known as uh, Vayikra, and also Orit Zelewawian, according to the Met of Kedus of Negus and Negest. So, my brothers and sisters, are um, more to come. Ine Ras Yadinos Tefarim Neng, and Wendem Yadin of the Line of Judah Society. And you can get more and check us out at our website, uh, www.lojsociety.org. Shalom Ras. Tafari.